China's totalitarian political system grants the ruling Communist Party all-encompassing powers. Its central government, namely the CCP's Central Committee and the State Council, control all political, economic and social matters, and the local governments play a subordinate role. This top-down relationship between the central and local governments has been on a roller coaster ride since the CCP seized power in 1949. The economic reforms in the past decades have turned the central-local relations into a power struggle that set the stage for local government debt to grow out of control. Hello everyone, I'm Lei. Welcome to Lei's Real Talk. I've talked extensively about the Chinese Communist Party's internal factional war and how this affects the CCP's policies and economy. Now, another power struggle within the CCP stems from the relationship between the central government in Beijing and the local, provincial, municipal and county governments. And this is also a major variable that determines where China's economy is heading because the massive local government debt is the direct result of this dysfunctional relationship. When Mao Zedong met with British Field Marshal Viscount Montgomery, Mao described his relations with the local governments like this. He said, take it away when their power grows big, release some power when they don't have much. After Mao, all CCP leaders followed his take and give approach in dealing with their local subordinates. They have not been able to break out of the cyclical change between centralized and decentralized power. After the CCP established its regime in China in 1949 and to quickly consolidate resources to stabilize the economy, it adopted a highly centralized budget system in which the central government controlled everything. Local revenues were consolidated by the central government and local government's budgets had to be pre-approved by Beijing. China is a large country in size and population and this centralized approach was difficult to manage. In 1953, the leadership decided to try a revenue-sharing fiscal system, dividing revenues into fixed, shared, and transfer revenues. Fixed revenues were what the local governments were entitled to. Shared revenues were divided among local and central governments. Transfer revenues were disbursements from the central to the local to cover any shortfall. The problem with this system was that local governments were not motivated to generate revenues since the central government would always cover their losses. Therefore, in 1959, more fiscal authority was delegated to local governments. As a result, the economy flourished and local revenues gradually grew and exceeded that of the central government. But as the local governments accumulated more wealth, the central government didn't allow it for very long. In 1961, under the pretext of needing to fight the Great Famine, Beijing revoked the fiscal power granted to the local governments. From then until 1978, the relations between the central and local governments kept going through cycles of centralization and decentralization. The CCP's inclination of wanting to maintain absolute power created a constant dilemma. When it centralized by taking power away, Local governments lost motivation and became financially dependent on the central. The country's economy then suffered. When power was decentralized, local governments felt motivated and the economy grew. As the booming economy accumulated wealth at the local level, it weakened the central government. That's how the CCP leaders perceived it, and they feared losing control to the local governments. The person who best described this problem is China's Premier Li Keqiang, who said on May 13, 2013, once we gave power to the local, it created disruption. Once disruption appeared, we took power back. Once we took power back, the economy died. To this day, the CCP has not broken out of this cycle. Ten years after the Cultural Revolution, after Mao died in 1976, the Chinese economy was on the brink of bankruptcy. Then came Deng Xiaoping and his reform and opening up. In order to relieve Beijing's financial pressure and mobilize localities to grow revenue, the CCP introduced the fiscal lump sum system. Various fiscal expenditures were no longer centrally managed 
and Beijing delegated fiscal power to local governments. In 1980, the State Council issued regulations on implementing a new fiscal system, which divided revenues and expenditures between the central and local governments. This rule was revised in 1983, stipulating that if local revenues exceeded expenses, the central government received the excess. If the local revenues were less than expenses, a percentage of the shared revenues would be reserved for the local government to cover the shortfall. The general directive of the policies was that the local governments were primarily responsible for balancing their fiscal budgets. This revenue expense sharing system reflected the central government's desire to maximize its revenue share, without discouraging local enthusiasm and productivity. Although it discouraged a local spending restraint, it gave the local governments the incentive to grow the economy. Years later, however, when the local government's total revenue exceeded the central government's revenue, the authorities in Beijing felt challenged. Like Mao Zedong had said, the central leadership needed to take the economic power back again from the locals. In 1994, China began to implement the fiscal recentralization reform called the tax sharing reform. The reform increased the central government's share of the revenues. The mastermind behind this reform was Premier Zhu Rongji, who mentioned in his memoir the remark he made in 1993 to local officials: "Total revenue and spending are your local government's secrets. I only care about how much the central government is getting." He promised the local officials economic autonomy in exchange for the higher revenue share. Zhu made the following concessions to the locals: one, local governments get to control local state banks; two, the local keeps non-tax revenue; three, the central government gets tariffs, import tax, and consumption tax. Capital gain and corporate tax and other taxes directly related to economic development are shared between central and local. With the adoption of the 1994 reform, the central government's share of revenue, which was only 22 percent of the total national revenue in 1993, was increased to over 50 percent. However, this reform created several problems. The first was that the central government shared in more revenues. But not expenses. After the reform, local governments collectively received 50% of national revenues, but pay for more than 80% of national expenses. That's a national figure. The financial bottom line varies from province to province. The revenues of some wealthy localities, such as Shanghai, could cover the expenses, but some poor regions could not. The central government's transfer payment system, in theory, was designed to cover the budget shortfall, but there was still a problem. When the central government's transfer payment trickled down from provincial, municipal to county and township, the chain of disbursement was too long. After each level of government took their share, there was not much left for the lowest level of government, which was the one that needed the most financial help. Another problem with the 1994 budget law was that it prohibited the local governments from issuing local government bonds. But the GDP-driven performance appraisal mechanism mobilized the local governments to pursue growth and investment. The need for funding to grow GDP and the lack of ability to issue debt securities prompted the local government to set up various urban investment companies as financing platforms. To obtain direct or indirect financing for the government's investment projects, and this was the beginning of the local government's debt problem. The 1994 reform was characterized by centralizing fiscal power and decentralizing economic affairs by delegating them to localities. After the central government took their chunk of money, it left the local to do what they wanted. This also set the stage for local debt to grow exponentially. In my next video, I'll talk about how the local government debt grew out of control and how the real estate bubble expanded. Here are the two videos I made about China's economic reforms. One is about Deng Xiaoping's struggle to find a successor, 
and the other is about why Xi Jinping steered China away from Deng Xiaoping's economic reforms. That's all for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.